In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a difficult vector problem and trying to break it down into a few simple steps. So we have a student who travels 10 meters east, 40 degrees north of east for 20 meters, north 30 meters, 20 degrees south of west for 8 meters, and east for another 3 meters. What is their displacement? And then give the magnitude and direction. So first of all, you want to go ahead and draw out each of these vectors. So let's go ahead and do that first. All right, so I finished drawing out all of my one, two, three, four, five vectors that were described in the original problem. So now that I have a rough sketch of that, here is our plan. We're gonna take all of these vectors and we are going to place them in either an X or Y column, depending if they're horizontal and vertical. And then as soon as we have all of our vectors sorted out into X and Y columns, then we can go ahead and combine them and then finally get the magnitude and direction of our final displacement or resultant. So if we take a look at our vectors, we have um, one horizontal one and another horizontal one right here. And then we have one completely vertical component right here. And then the other two are angled. So basically what we want to do is take our angled components and break it up into its X and Y components. And how we do that is we basically create a right triangle out of it. So let's go ahead and start with this one first. So we are going to close off this vector with a X and Y component. Here's our X component right here. And here is our Y component right here. And then we closed off that 40 degree angle so we can go ahead and use that. So for the Y component, we are going to want to use the sine of the angle. So the sine is always going to give you the opposite end over the hypotenuse. So we're going to have the opposite, the Y end, and then we're able to utilize our hypotenuse. And then we're going to multiply both sides by 20, which is basically scooting 20 to the other side. And once we do 20 times sine of 40 degrees, then we get... 12.86 let's go ahead and fix that 12.86 meters for our vertical component now for our horizontal component we're going to end up using the cosine of 40 degrees because the cosine will give us the adjacent side which is the x divided by our hypotenuse again that 20. So if we multiply both sides by 20, it's going to cancel on the right side and then scoot over to the left. So 20 times cosine of 40 gives us 15.32. And then now we have our X component. So we're going to do something similar for this angled component as well. We're going to close off that 20 degrees and then create an X component and then create a Y component. Now, um, one thing I also wanted to mention is that when you have the notation like this, north of east um, or south of west, you want to make sure you're familiar with your cardinal directions. So we have north, east, south, and west. So the reason I knew how to drew, uh, draw this um, vector in, just like the 40 degree one, is it says 20 degrees south of west. Okay, So we're going to take west and we are going to tilt 20 degrees away from west just like we did previously over here it says north of east so i'm going to tilt 40 degrees up north away from directly east so that's how i know how to direct those vectors okay so back to the components we have the x and y component um, let me go ahead and label my y component and then we're going to do basically this same exact thing over here except we're going to use um, 20 degrees this time and then our hypotenuse is now eight but same idea and then our X component is going to come out to 7.52. And then our Y component is going to come out to 2.74. Okay, so as of now, um, things look like a little bit of a mess. So we want to make sure we sort things into their X and Y components. So let me grab all of my X's. We have um, 
an X over here. So we have 7.52 to the left. We have this one over here. We have three to the right. We have this component. We have the 15. 0.32 to the right, and then we have our first one, we have 10 to the right, okay? So it doesn't necessarily matter which one you call positive or negative. I'm gonna call this one negative because everything is going to the right, so I'll leave those as positives and leave that as a negative. So if I sum those up, then I have um, three plus 15.32, which is 18.32, plus the 10, which is 28.32, minus the 7.52 in the opposite direction. And then I will have a final vector going to the right with a magnitude of 20.8. So I summed up all of my horizontal vectors and my final net horizontal vector is 20.8 to the right. Now I'm gonna do the same exact thing with my vertical vectors. I have 2.74 going down. I have the big 30 meter vector going up, and then I also have the 12.86 going upwards. And then normally I'll call everything up positive and everything down negative. So if I sum these up, I get 42.86 minus 2.74. And then I have a final net vertical vector of 40.12. Now we're gonna do is we're gonna take our two um, final vectors of 20.8 and 40.12 and piece them together with the tip to tail method to find our final displacement. So we have 20.8 meters going to the right and then we're going to bring it upwards 40.12 meters. And then our final displacement or resultant is going to be this purple vector here, connecting the beginning of your first vector to the end of your second vector. And then we'll call that um, R for the resultant. So all we have to do is use the Pythagorean theorem to go ahead and find that resultant vector. So we're going to do 20.8 squared plus 40.12 squared equals, and we'll call that R squared. So if we go ahead and take the square root of both sides, then we're going to get our resultant of 45.19 meters. So that covers our magnitude. That is our final magnitude of our displacement. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're also going to find the direction as well. Now we have all three sides of the triangle. We have the blue vector, the red vector, and now we know the purple one is 45. 0.19 meters. So if we want to find this angle over here, then we can um, add our direction to our magnitude. So we can do that a few different ways. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the inverse tangent. And then inverse tangent of this is opposite over the adjacent. So 40.12 divided by 20.8. Put that in my calculator and then I get a final angle of 62.60 degrees and then that's tilted up from straight east so then we're going to call that 62.60 degrees north of east so to sum things up what you want to do is take all of your angled components and then find the x and y components using sine and cosine from there you can go ahead and organize your horizontal and vertical vectors such as these right here with our X and Y columns, um, add up everything that's in the same direction, subtract things that are in the opposite direction to get a final net horizontal vector and a final net vertical vector. Piece those two together and then the hypotenuse of that triangle is going to be your displacement or your final resultant, which we have over here in green. And if you want an angle, you can go ahead and use an inverse trig function of any sort. I chose to use the inverse of tangent to use the opposite and adjacent sides, and I got 62.60 degrees. So I hope that was helpful in helping you solve a difficult vector problem. Thank you for watching and listening.